Well, the bright side is I didn't have my stream go down every five minutes like it has the last two pay-per-views. Um, anyway, uh, this is the Backlash 2018 recap and review. Uh, I'll get to my overall thoughts on the show towards the end there. Um, I will make a few overall points uh, as we progress through the matches. Anyway, uh, our first match is the kickoff show match, uh, Bailey versus Ruby Riot. Now, um, before this, there was a little backstage vignette uh, where Sasha Banks confronted Bailey. Uh, they basically got into an argument. Sasha said she's not coming down to be in Bailey's corner because Bailey left her high and dry last week on Raw. Um, they still have yet to make any sort of official turn on either end, so don't know where exactly they're going with this. Um, Overall, though, the match was a pretty decent little solid kickoff show match. Um, there was some chain wrestling early on. Uh, Bailey reversed a hammer lock into kind of a hip toss. Uh, Bailey did a cross body into an Oklahoma roll, got a two count on it. Uh, Riot tried to. At one point, though, uh, Ruby Riot was in the corner and Bailey uh, got flipped up over the top rope and uh, she didn't quite make it all the way uh, high enough. She sort of bounced off of it uh, and got tangled up a little bit. Um, at this point, Riot kind of dominated the match. Uh, Riot hit a flatliner into an arm bar. Uh, Riot uh, distracted the referee, which allowed uh, Sarah Logan to land a cheap so shot. Uh, Bailey came back, hit a triangle crossbody, got a two count. Uh, she then went after the Riot Squad, uh, primarily Sarah Logan. Uh, Liv Morgan stayed in the background a lot. Um, at that point, uh, Bailey actually did a head scissors through the ropes on Sarah Logan, and I think she hit her. Bailey hit her head really hard at some point. I don't know if it was on the ring apron or it was you know on one of the padded areas outside the ring, but yeah, uh, she was kind of daisy the rest of the match. At that point, um, Liv Morgan did interject herself, uh, got a quick cheap shot in on Bailey, which allowed Riot to hit the Riot kick for the three count and the victory. Um, afterwards, uh, Bailey sat in the ring, but nothing really happened to progress that feud. They pretty much it was, I'd say, two and a half to three minutes before the show proper started. So, yeah, they didn't really have time to do anything to progress that angle. Okay, our second match is the Intercontinental Championship match between Seth Rollins and The Miz. Um, right off the bat, Miz slammed Rollins' head off of the turn two of the turnbuckles. Miz countered a super kick attempt with a kick of his own. Uh, Miz blocked a springboard assault with a kick. Uh, Miz blocked another super kick and went for a DDT. Uh, Rollins came back, he had kind of a face buster, not quite the, uh, the X Factor, but sort of in that vein. Uh, Rollins hit a sling blade and followed it with a big suicide dive. Miz countered a uh, springboard maneuver into a skull crushing finale attempt. Rollins countered that into a victory roll on his own. Miz uh, tripped Rollins, who uh, fell off of the ring apron. Uh, Miz countered another suicide dive with a punch. Uh, at one point, they were fighting on the ring apron. Rollins went for the revolution knee. Uh, Miz dodged it, and Rollins wound up hitting the ring post. Uh, this allowed Miz to lock on the figure four. Um, Rollins managed to roll out of it and get to the ropes. Uh, Miz hit the skull crush and finally got a two count. Miz uh, countered. Uh, Rollins came back and hit, was doing his uh, superplex into the Falcon Arrow. And Miz countered that into another skull crushing finale for another two count. Rollins fought a roll up attempt in that, and then uh, Miz went for a roll up. Uh, Rollins rolled out of it, hit the curb stomp, got the three count, and the victory. Uh, this kind of gave the impression that we were going to be having a, a stellar night. I mean, that was the opening match of the show, and it was spectacular. Um, both guys were just really at the top of their game. Uh, you know, Again, it's like, it's obvious that I think, even to an extent, the I think all of the undercard divisions right now are probably way more interesting than the main event slots. And, uh, you know, this pretty much typified that philosophy. Okay, our next match is the Raw Women's Championship match, Nia Jax against Alexa Bliss. Um, immediately, uh, 
Alexa tried to go in for some quick attacks and take uh, Nia off her feet. Uh, she had a big drop kick to the knee. Um, eventually, Nia fought back. She uh, grabbed Alexa's arm and twisted it, and uh, that allowed her to uh, Alexa to dislocate her elbow again. Uh, remember, she's double jointed. Anyway, um, uh, Alexa came back in another drop kick to the knee. Uh, uh, Nia went for a rolling senton, but uh, Alexa dodged that. Uh, Nia, f at one point, uh, Nia tried to go for her uh, second rope Samoan drop again, but Alexa fought out of it. Unfortunately, Nia then uh, maneuvered Alexa into a different position, uh, had Alexa's arms, and flipped her over her head off of the top rope and uh, to the ring below. Um, at this point, um, uh, Nia went for uh, basically a Vader bomb or a bonsai drop. Alexa managed to get up and generate enough momentum to flip uh, Nia over the top rope and to the floor below. Nia was really so, she, Nia was really, really close to banging her head on the ring steps. And um, Alexa then hit a DDT onto the ring steps. Uh, if Nia, if Alexa really struggled to get Nia back in the ring, almost barely a beating a 10 count. Uh, Nia hit, or uh, Nia came back and tried to go for another uh, second rope Samoa drop. But again, Alexa fought out of it, uh, kicked uh, Nia's knee on the second turnbuckle. Nia, uh, Alexa then went up for the Twisted Bliss, but Nia caught her and hit the Samoan drop for the three count and the victory, Nia Jax retains. Um, and afterwards, um, Alexa looked to be very emotionally distressed, and there might have been another reason for this, as there are currently reports going around that uh, she possibly separated her shoulder uh, in the course of the match, which uh, could explain a few things. Uh, there did seem to be like a lack of quickness involved in this, but... That, which is really well that should have been set up. I will say this. I did think the match was actually pretty good. I thought it was even better than their Mania one. Uh, it told a better story. I thought it was a, a bit more solid. Uh, I understand that there are some aspects of this. because Again, because of the size differential, they had to do certain things. But I think they did a, a better way of working them into the match. And that leads us into our next match, the United States Championship match, Jeff Hardy against Randy Orton. Um, Jeff Hardy managed to fight it out of the headlock and he hit his uh, sit-down uh, seated jawbreaker move. Uh, Hardy then hit a plunge to the outside. Orton uh, then pushed Hardy over the turnbuckle and onto the ring post. And um, Orton then tried to... Uh, Stock Hardy on the outside of the ring, but he got a leg larry from the top rope. Uh, Orton uh, hit a big drop kick on Hardy off of the ring apron. Uh, Hardy actually came back and managed to hit the Whisper in the Wind. Yes, he actually hit it this time. He didn't miss it like he did with Jinder. And uh, Orton fought back. He went for the RKO. Jeff countered that into the Twist of Fate, hit the Swanton for the three count and the victory. Um, yeah, this is where we really do hit our motif for the night, unfortunately. Uh, the big running thread throughout uh, pretty much all the matches from here on out was rest holds. Rest hold, rest hold, head scissors, sleeper hold, uh, top wrist locks, and it did unfortunately uh, take a lot of the momentum out of this. Uh, this match was not properly set up, really. Um, I don't, it, it was also. Uh, plainly predictable. I don't think they were going to put the belt back on Orton. I think that was just meant to be a, a one-time thing to make him a Grand Slam champion and then have him carry the belt in Ameri uh, the United States Championship in a mania. Um, I, I am hoping that we could now maybe get some new feuds here. Uh, should be starting to get through on that. Uh, that's really all I can say. Okay, our next match is Daniel Bryan against Big Cass. Um, right off the bat, uh, Bryan targeted uh, Cass's surgically repaired knee. He hit a couple of big kicks on it. Uh, Bryan hit a flying knee uh, through the ring ropes. He then hit a flying knee off the ring apron. Uh, Bryan started landing the yes kicks at that point. Eventually, Cass got back and hit a big body slam. He landed a series of punches. Um, 
Cass countered a flying knee into a big flapjack slam. Cass landed a series of big lariats after that. Unfortunately, Cass did more playing to the crowd than he did actually attacking Daniel Bryan. And uh, that really did kind of kill the momentum this match had. Uh, it didn't... Qu it, I thought that this match really should have been better than it was. And it really wasn't that good. Um, you know, Bryan was desperately trying. I don't know if Cax just had some ring rust on him or what, but yeah, maybe they should have had Cass had a few more matches before, uh, you know, putting him into a feud with Bryan right off the bat. But, um, yeah, anyway, uh, Bryan came back, managed to lock on the yes lock, and Cass tapped out. Afterwards, though, uh, Cass attacked Bryan, uh, dumped him out of the ring a couple of times. Uh, eventually, uh, Cass hit a big boot to Brian's head, uh, so they could sell another possible concussion angle, and, yeah, again, stuff that just, it seemed like this whole match was just out of sync, it didn't really work very well, it was very awkward, uh, it, even to the point that, like, Again, the uh, the post match beatdown lacked any true feeling of a beatdown until Cass hit the boot. Like, you know, he's got to have some other impact moves in there. Like, maybe have him hit the the Easter slam and then the big boot. Like, just something to make it feel like it had more of an impact. It just, yeah. I know I'm mammering at home there, but yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, this was just non-existent really. And that leads us into the SmackDown Women's Championship match, Carmella versus Charlotte, or is it Charlotte Flair, or is it back to Charlotte now? Um, anyway, uh, Carmella tried to mock Charlotte by doing some style and profiling of her own, and Charlotte responded with a big boot. Uh, Carmella dodged a plancha and hit a savat kick of her own. At this point, Carmella basically uh, started trying to leave with the belt, uh, um, it led up to a pretty good scene, like, she said, I don't need to do this, I can just get counted out, that won't change hands. It, that's, she was screaming throughout this match, but since she's the heel, it actually makes sense for her to do stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> and she takes the belt, she starts leaving, and Charlotte actually, it looked like a scene out of, um, oh, what was that movie from the 80s about the kid who fights the bully? Is it 4 o'clock high or 3 o'clock high? Where, yeah, again, like the kid opens the door and the, uh, the bully is just standing there in the bathroom waiting for him to show up. Uh, that's exactly what it looked like where Charlotte was sitting on the other end of the ring post just waiting for Carmella to start walking. And then she popped out at the last minute and <laughs> uh, that was a really well set up scene. Uh, unfortunately, after that, uh, more rest holds. Uh, Charlotte fought out of a sleeper hold in her backpack stunner. Carmella countered a big boot with a hair pull slam. Carmella, uh, Charlotte then countered a Bronco Buster with a spear. Carmella managed to come back to unlock down the cone of silence with Charlotte only just barely making it into the ring ropes. Uh, Charlotte went up for her moonsault. Carmella dodged it. Uh, Charlotte sold that she injured her knee and that allowed uh, Carmella to basically do a jackknife pin on Charlotte for the three count and the victory, Carmella retains. Um, this match, uh, again, much like the Raw Women's Championship match, was not terrible. Uh, again, the other motif of the night, uh, like I said, the motif of the night was uh, a little over-reliance on rest holds in a lot of the matches. Uh, other than that, the, I mean, it, it wasn't a terrible match. It was uh, pretty by the numbers. Uh, not surprised, they, I mean, Carmella just won the belt, you probably want to have her, uh, possess it a little bit longer. I don't know what they're going to do, I don't know they're going to do a women's Money in the Bank match, because Money in the Bank is the next big show. Uh, don't know how or what they're going to, yeah, how that's going to shake out, if anyone's going to, uh, if Charlotte's going to be going for the briefcase or she'll be going for the championship. Uh, be interesting to figure out how that happens. Okay, our next match is the WWE Championship match, uh, which was an ODQ match. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, 
right off the bat, uh, Nakamura just rolled after the uh, rolled out of the ring uh, right after the bell rang. Um, Styles basically pursued Nakamura and tossed him into the ring barricade several times. Uh, Styles dodged a knee strike and hit a backbreaker. Uh, not really a lot of weapons in this no DQ match. They, they stayed for the most part pretty in the ring, except uh, a few times they brawled a bit outside. Uh, Styles splashed Nakamura across the ring barricade. Nakamura fought back and uh, tossed Styles into the ring steps and then hit a guillotine knee drop from the uh, ring apron. Uh, Nakamura landed uh, let's see, a massive kick to Styles' head up. Uh, I think it was like a, a spin kick around at one point. Um, let's see, massive kick. Okay, Nakamura kicked Styles off the ring barricade. Styles was trying to do kind of a springboard and a phenomenal forearm from the timekeeper's area. Uh, Nakamura hit a drop kick and uh, the, no, the draping knee strike in the corner followed up with a flying knee strike, got a two count. Nakamura then got a chair into the ring, uh, hit an exploder suplex, um, only got a two count on it. Uh, Styles uh, countered a Kinshasa by uh, throwing the chair, he, he literally threw it about full force straight into Nakamura's knee. Uh, and then the chair actually had a recoil bounce and it caught style, the, the little join. Just a sec. Yes, I actually have a visual aid. Anyway, uh, when Styles threw the chair, like I said, he threw it about full force. It hit Nakamura's knee because he was going into the, the Kinshasa knee strike. And the chair actually came back like this, and it caught Styles right on his cheek, uh, kind of in this manner, and uh, gave him a really, really nasty cut. Uh, <laughs> sorry there. Let's put that on the side, I guess. Um, uh, gave him a real nasty cut on the side of the face. And uh, let's get the notes back here. Um, let's see. Um, eventually, AJ came back. He locked on the cash crusher. Um, Nakamura eventually fought out of it, got into a triangle hold. Uh, Styles fought out of that, tried to go into the Styles Clash. But Nakamura fought out of that, he hit a low blow. Uh, AJ fell to his knees and he managed to get a low blow on Nakamura. And then um, they both low blowed each other. Uh, they kicked each other in the nuts uh, simultaneously. And neither of them answered the 10 count, so the match ended in a draw. And I think everyone then began hoping, like, okay, well, Paige or Shane McMahon's going to come out and say, no, nope, no, nope, this isn't happening. This match needs a winner. Restart the match. And that didn't happen. They just ended it on a draw. And yeah, unfortunately, this was a really darn good match. And then the ending kind of killed it. Um, like I said, I don't know what they're going to do. I'm kind of anxious to maybe see someone other than Nakamura challenge Styles at this point. I mean, we've had three chances. Do we really need a fourth on top of that? You know, put Nakamura in the Money in the Bank match. Like, just, just someone different. I'd like to see AJ and Miz personally at this point. I think that would be a much more interesting storyline. Okay, uh, our second to last match of the evening is Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, and this was pretty much the most forgettable match of the show. Uh, basically, uh, Lashley tossed Zayn around. Zayn tagged in Owens. Lashley tackled Owens, who tagged in Zayn. Um, Zane's slingshot. Eventually they got in and they managed to get Lashley off his feet. Uh, they were getting, Lashley was trying to get back into the ring after some brawling on the outside. Sammy hit kind of the, uh, I'm trying to think what it's called now, uh, basically uh, the hangman move on the top rope knocked Lashley out of the ring. A bit that allowed Owens and Zane to kind of take over a bit, but eventually Lashley got the tag to Strowman. At this point, Zayn basically gave up and tried to walk out and just take the count out loss. Uh, Owens went after him and said, hey, what's going on? I was like, no, we, we fight. That's what we do. We fight. And they argue a bit. Owens, uh, Zayn tossed Owens back into the ring, but then Owens got back out of the ring and tossed Zayn back into the ring, but then Zayn got back out and tossed Owens back into the ring, and 
uh, Lashley and Strowman basically took down Owens, pinned him right off the bat, and then afterwards, Sammy and Owens argued a bit, and then they both got beat up, and then, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, that match should have been on the kickoff show, because, or it should have been the opener, because that was a nothing match, and it just did not belong as the second to the main. This was, uh, I mean, this was even a good cool-down match. It was so, yeah, utterly pointless. Oh, I also, yeah, you're probably wondering, um, I think it was between the United States Championship match and, uh, just a sec here, uh, the Daniel Bryan big cast match. Uh, there was a segment involving Elias, and then the New Day, and then uh, Rusev Day, and then... Uh, no Way Jose, who came out with titles worldwide, and Brazongo, and it, well, it was pretty funny just because it was con people just constantly trying to upstage Elias, which irked him further and further. Yeah, it didn't really add anything. <laughs> Again, maybe if they got rid of that, the show could have been a bit tighter as well. And maybe they wouldn't have had to have so many rest holds during the match. Anyway, uh, that leads us into our main event, uh, Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Uh, the newer crowd is decidedly pro-Samoa Joe. Um, Joe opened up, even before the bell rang, he had, he, <coughs> excuse me, Urinagi reigns through, uh, I believe it was the Spanish announced table. Uh, he then tossed Reigns over a couple other tables. Uh, the bell rings, Joe pounds on Reigns in the corner with some punches. Uh, Joe hit a jumping in Zaguri, only got a two count. Joe hit a suicide dive and sent Reigns in the barricade. Uh, Reigns came back, eventually landed a big boot and then a drive-by drop kick. Uh, he went, Reigns went for a Superman punch, but Joe countered that into an attempted Coquina clutch. Uh, Reigns fought out of that, hit a spear for a two count. Um, in between this, though, there were a lot more rest holds, just so you know. Uh, Joe countered up a roll-up attempt into a Coquina clutch. Rollins fought out of the the sleeper hold. Uh, Ray, uh, Joe went for a muscle buster, Reigns fought out of that, uh, hit him with the spear for the three count and the victory. Um, this match, a lot of people are dumping on it, I think because Reigns won, and I understand that, but to be honest, the match itself was okay. It was not a main event match, and I think that was a big problem. And I, again, it seems like most of social media was really dumping on this show, and hey, I just didn't see that. I'm not saying the show was great by any means. Again, I do admit the over-reliance on rest holds and some of the booking decisions just, yeah, did not make sense. Did, it did fall flat, but obviously, like, the Intercontinental Championship match was great. Both women's championship matches were entertaining. Uh, you know, again, this did balance out to be a very average show. It, it was not the dumpster fire everyone's else making it out to be. Grand Royal Rumble was a dumpster fire. This show, it was average. I'm giving it a C. Um, anyway, uh, see, next video is, well, the next video is going to be the review of um, Life of the Party. Um, the random trade review on Trish Out of Water will be up next. I'm still in the early scripting stages for that. Um, it's not a long story, so it's not like I'm going to enter a huge time crush or anything. After that, um, no, the next wrestling video uh, is, well, it's not going to be Money in the Bank. It's going to be the NXT show before Money in the Bank. But yeah, uh, money that's not until uh, the middle of June. That's June 16th and 17th uh, for uh, TakeOver and Money in the Bank. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, see you all next time.
me always talking about WWE and NXT? Want to see me cover something like, say, Ring of Honor, Impact, New Japan, anything else? Check out my Patreon at Sleepy Time for Cat Productions and see how you can help me expand my wrestling coverage.